In Bertrand oligopoly competition, we still consider the non-cooperative behavior between the oligopoly firms. The key difference between the Bertrand model and the Kuhnor model is that now, instead of the firms deciding on the quantity to set, they will make price decision. That means one competitor will view the price set by the other competitor as given and then based on that belief this firm will decide at what price it will offer its product again we still assume identical products and identical costs we still assume the constant marginal cost at five dollars since it's a constant marginal cost that will equal to the average cost as well we can view these Bertrand model firms as have very little capacity constraint, which means as long as there is a little bit of margin, the price is slightly higher than the marginal cost or average cost, there's some money to be made, and these firms can cut their price and take over the whole quantity demanded by the market and take all the possible profit can be earned from this market. Again, the idea is that the firm in Bertrand competition with the lower price will be able to take over the complete market because the two firms are offering identical products. So as long as the price is above the marginal cost, there is incentive for the firm to cut the price a bit compared to its competitors and take over the whole market. In figure 11.5, we have these two identical firms who has the same cost structure and the producing identical products. Both of them have $5 as their marginal cost and average cost. These two firms' best response functions lies very close to the 45 degree line, meaning that if one firm set a price at a certain level, the other firm cut the price slightly, then the other firm can take over the whole market. So in this Bertrand price competition, the firm's best response curves lies very close to this 45 degree line. And we can actually say the distance between the 45 degree line and this light blue line and green lines actually exaggerated in this picture. In reality, they may be much closer. The distance is actually limited by the minimum amount they can cut, which is one cent in this example. So if Firm 1 set its price at $10. According to Firm 2's best response curve, Firm 2 will set its price at $9.99. If Firm 2, on the vertical axis, set its price at $10, according to this blue line, the Firm 1's best response curve, Firm 1 will set its own price at $9.99. As we have said before, once Firm 1 sets its price slightly less than Firm 2's price, it will capture the whole market's quantity demanded. And given this $9.99, Firm 2 will further cut its own price to $9.98, and then Firm 1 will cut its price to $9.97. Firm Two now nine dollar and ninety six cents. From one cuts to nine dollar and ninety five cents, and so on and so forth, so on and so forth. The price war unravel to this equilibrium point of five dollars very fast. At this equilibrium point, both firms are charging the price at its marginal cost, which is the same for both firms, five dollars. No firm want to charge below $5 because once the price fall below $5, the firm will lose 
money on each unit sold. For example, if one firm charge four dollar at ninety nine cents, it will lose a cent on every unit sold, and the other firm will just shut down not to supply any quantity because it won't make money on selling the product. So is the firm setting the price below the marginal cost. So. Below five dollars, no firm will participate in this market. But at five dollars, they're breaking even, making zero economic profit, and still cover all of their opportunity cost, so they can make accounting profit. So they still supply in the market. Notice that this result, the price is at the marginal cost, is the same kind of outcome. From a perfectly competitive market, so in the standard Bertrand model, we actually have a equilibrium result that yield the same outcome as the competitive market. However, this is not quite plausible in the oligopoly market because usually when the firms in the oligopoly market they have market power. They can set the price above the marginal cost, and as we have seen in Kuhner model, the market outcome actually depends on the demand in the market, also the marginal cost. However, in this Bertrand model, the market price only depends on the marginal cost, and it's not response to the demand conditions nor the number of firms in the market. So, because firms in the standard Bertrand duopoly make no economic profit, and price is not sensitive to demand conditions and the number of firms, as in the Kuhner model. We don't think the standard Bertrand duopoly is as realistic as the Kuhner model. However, if we extend the basic Bertrand model to differentiate the product, which means The firms offer similar products, but they are not identical. Then this kind of Bertrand model will be more plausible because now the price can be set higher than the marginal cost, as the firms have their own loyal customers, and the price set by the firms will be sensitive to the demand conditions and the number of competitors in this oligopoly market. Actually, in picture 11.6, we still assume the marginal cost is five dollars for both firms. If you would like to see the details in mathematical derivation of the results for figure 11.6, you have to look at the appendix of this chapter. A key result that we will see that is different from the Standard Bertrand model is that because now the firms have market power, they have their own loyal customers. The firm with slightly lower price in this extended version of Bertrand model cannot take over the complete quantity demanded in this market. No matter how low one firm sets its own price. There will be some customer still buying the products from another firm. Here we use Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola as our example firms. The light blue line is Coke's best response curve to all the prices set by Pepsi. The horizontal axis is the price set by Pepsi, and then the dark green line is. Pepsi's best response curve to all the possible prices set by Coke. The vertical axis is the price of Coke. Now let's look at what does it means when we have this kind of gradual best response curves for either of the competitor in this oligopoly market. Let's use Coke as an example. If Pepsi Cut its price by let's say two dollars here, and from Coke's best response curve, we can see Coke only responds to that price cut by a very limited amount. Let's say that will be 
50 cents. What it is telling us is that even if Pepsi has cut its price by this large amount, Coke only need to respond by a very limited price cut. Because even though Pepsi has cut its price by this large amount, Coke won't lose a lot of its loyal customers. Only the marginal customers who may wave between Coke and Pepsi will switch for Pepsi's lower price. And for those customers who really prefer Coke's product, they won't be attracted by the much lower Pepsi price and change their purchasing behavior. And through this analysis, we actually see a Nash-Bertrand equilibrium for this market with an equilibrium price of $13. Remember, our assumption is actually the marginal cost is just $5. So when we have this differentiated product in the price competition for the Bertrand model, the price can be higher than the marginal cost, which is more realistic. If we think about the price war dynamics, let's say Pepsi set its price at $10.40, then Coke will set at somewhere between $9.75 and $13, and then Pepsi will see that price and uh, increase its price a bit, so will Coke in response. So the price eventually moved to $13 for both firms. Similar story here. Let's see if the price is here for Pepsi. Coke will set at this price level and then Pepsi will respond on this dark green line. And to respond to that price, Coke will lower its price from uh, this level to here. And still, in the equilibrium, both parties set their own prices at $13. Again, because $13 is the best response for both firms to the price set by the other firm, this is a Nash equilibrium.